my goodness, if your New Year's resolution is to lose weight through keto, I am going to give you the ultimate guide for keto weight loss. So let's get this show on the road. Hey folks, my name's Allie, let's get started. You may want to get a pen and some paper because I have lots of tips for you. Now, why should you listen to me? Well, I have lost 170 pounds following a ketogenic lifestyle. I lost all of my weight in two years. I've been in maintenance mode for almost three years now. So I think I know a little bit about how to lose weight through the ketogenic lifestyle. And I just try and share my information and all of my experiences with those folks who struggle with weight loss. I know it's a struggle and I'm just, I wanna be that person that you can listen to and just, you know, know that I've done it and you can do it too. Before I give you some awesome tips for weight loss through the ketogenic lifestyle, let's talk about what is keto, what is not keto, and what is keto weight loss. So very simply, a ketogenic lifestyle is one in which you eat so few carbs that your body is forced to run on fat for fuel. That's it. That means that the main key for you to be in a state of ketosis is that you limit your carbs so low that your body has nothing else to run on but fat. And it can get that fat from multiple ways. It can get it through dietary fat or from body fat. In general, when you're not talking about weight loss, the ketogenic lifestyle is a high fat, low carb diet with moderate protein. You always want to hit that protein goal. Now, what is not keto? Keto is not just adding fat in because remember, you have to reduce those carbs so that your body is forced to run on fat. So if you just eat your normal diet, but you add in keto products or just lots of bacon and fatty foods, you're probably not going to be in a state of ketosis unless those carbs are very, very low. Now, what is keto weight loss? This is a totally different animal, and I still have lots of people, you know, comment on my videos that I'm not doing keto, even though I do keto for weight loss and weight maintenance. Remember, this video is talking about keto weight loss for those folks who want to lose a lot of weight over the next year, or the next few months, you know what I'm saying. It does work pretty quickly. <laughs> so the ketogenic lifestyle for weight loss is a very low carb, higher protein, moderate fat diet. Now I know that that goes against everything that you've heard about keto, but remember, if you wanna lose fat, you don't have to eat it through your diet. You wanna burn that fat from your body. So not only are we counting carbs, protein, and fat macros, but we're also counting calories for ketogenic weight loss. So yes, calories matter for a weight loss ketogenic lifestyle. So the general four rules for ketogenic weight loss are keep your carbs low. I always recommend 20 to 25 net grams of carbs per day. You want to hit a protein goal or else you will have hair and nail issues like I have had in the past. Remember that fat is a limit. It is not a goal. And that limit is dependent upon your calories that you can eat at a deficit to lose weight. So for weight loss, you do not have to eat all of that dietary fat. You do not have to load on all the olive oil or all the cheese or all the higher fatty meats because you want your body to eat the fat from itself. You don't want to have to consume it because if you're consuming it, it's not going to burn the fat from your body. If you want more info, I have a whole video talking about the importance of calories and not using fat as a goal for keto weight loss. And I will link that down below. So now that we know what a ketogenic weight loss lifestyle is comprised of, let's get into some nifty tips and a guide for you to follow so that you can lose weight this year. The first thing you do before starting any diet, it was the first thing I did, was you need to research this diet. If you don't believe me, then you need to go and find out other resources. The one that I used to lose all of my weight was the subreddit on reddit.com for keto. Read the fact ask questions, you know, listen to other people's experiences and get to know what this diet is all about. I hate the word diet because really it is a lifestyle, but I also hate the word lifestyle change. It's kind of cliche, but whatever. <laughs> remember a diet is just something that you eat. And so when you're talking about a diet, you want to remember that this is for the long term. It is a way of eating for the long term so that you can lose weight and get healthy. The second thing you need to do is to figure out your needs. No lifestyle change, no diet for weight loss is going to work if it's not meeting the needs of your lifestyle and your habits. 
So figure out what you need to have in a different type of diet. That means that if you like your three meals a day, don't try and jump into intermittent fasting. It took me almost four years before I actually liked intermittent fasting. You do not have to dive into everything that you hear about right away. Now, if that's something that you want to do and you're ready to do that, then fine. But make sure that everything that you're doing and changing matches what your lifestyle requires. If you just think that you're going to die without having a sweet treat at night after your dinner, then figure out a plan to incorporate some ketogenic friendly sweet treats into your diet. And I used those sweet treats for a long time and I just got over them in the past month or so. But if you need those, then use ketogenic sweet treats. Again, it's all about your needs, what's going to work for you, and it's gonna be individual for every single person because everybody has different needs. The third thing you should do is figure out your goals and your motivation. Guys, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be so honest. When it comes to motivation, it can be anything you want it to be. I'm a little vain sometimes, and sometimes I just wanna look nice in my clothes. Or I wanna look nice for like a special occasion, and that's a lot of my motivation. Uh, <laughs> it's just wanting to look my best. But if you have kids and you want to be healthy and at a healthy weight so that you can see them grow up, that's great motivation. I don't have kids, so I don't have that motivation. <laughs> Again, it's whatever you need. Or if you have a wedding coming up, let that be your motivation. If you want to, you know, look your best for your wedding, go have fun shopping for a wedding dress and just not feeling unsatisfied with what you're trying on and how you look, then let that be motivation too. I would recommend having a goal weight in mind. When I started at 320, I knew 150 to 160 was a healthy weight. 150 was my goal and I made it all the way down. But another part of motivation is having these mini goals along the way. So what does that mean? That means, you know, maybe for my birthday, which is in a month or so, maybe I just want to like hit that next 10 pound goal weight. Or for the holidays, if you're going to go meet your boyfriend's family, maybe you want to be at a certain weight by Christmas or something like that. It's up to you, but you definitely need to have these mini goals along the way. I think that that just keeps the motivation going. And without motivation, I mean, it's going to be so difficult to remain on a lifestyle change. So motivation is one of the two keys that I will talk about in this video. It's so important. And I have a whole video talking about motivation if you would like to see that and why it's important for weight loss. The fourth thing you need to do to lose weight on a ketogenic lifestyle is figure out your approach and your plan. There are so many keto gurus out there. I consider myself one. <laughs> and they're all going to tell you something different because they've all experienced the ketogenic lifestyle in their own way and for their own needs and wants. For some people, weight loss isn't essential. They don't need to lose weight, they just wanna feel better. For me, it was essential, and now I use it for weight maintenance. There are several different ways for approaching the ketogenic lifestyle. They range from very lazy keto, just cutting out the main offenders like the sweets, the candy, the ice cream, the bread, the pasta, the corn, and the potatoes, and all that. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you have those people that go whole, natural, you know, nothing processed, no traces of grains or sugar at all in their diet. They are logging everything that they eat. And then you have those people in the middle of the spectrum. I definitely fall somewhere in the middle of the strictness spectrum. You know, I do log basically everything that I eat, but you know, I'm not totally against processed foods if it's simple and it fits into my day and maybe it has a trace couple of grams of sugar, then I might eat it. So it's going to depend on what fits your needs. So you need to figure out what type of ketogenic lifestyle you can handle at first. Now I will say this, it is best to kind of get everything out of your life that you know that you do not need. So in a way I say be as strict as you can, especially when you start out, but also don't be afraid to incorporate those more fun foods. So if you need to start out and have some sweet treats or you want to eat all the bacon just to kind of get your tastes changed, I say do that. Again, it's going to be different for every single person though. So once you figure out your approach, you can kind of figure out your plan, like your meal plan and things like that. What types of foods do you want to eat? What foods are you definitely going to cut out and never ever try and have in your life again? Because that's an important thing is figuring out those lines in the sand. You know, for me, it was just, I'm never going to have bread. I'm never going to have pasta or corn or anything like that or potatoes. I did allow small amounts of sugar, like in some sausages that I would eat or in very dark chocolate. So it just depends on what will fit your lifestyle, your budget, and your needs. 
So what does it mean to figure out your plan? Well, you need to know exactly the amount of macronutrients you need and the calories that you need to lose weight. I will link my favorite ketogenic calculator down below. It is the exact same one that I found on Reddit five years ago from Anchorol, if I'm saying that right. Set it to sedentary if like you are just, you know, not working out all day every day. And I would always suggest try and start out with about a 20% deficit in calories. If you are not sure how to plug in the numbers into this ketogenic calculator, I actually went through this with my friend Amanda a year ago and I kind of showed her how to get on to the ketogenic lifestyle. And if you'd like a tutorial on how to figure out your own macronutrient and calorie requirements, I will link this video down below. The fifth thing you need to do before actually starting to change your lifestyle is to have before pictures and before measurements and you need to commit. You need to come to that point where you say, I'm going to give this the best go that I can. I'm going to be true to myself. I'm going to be true to my efforts and I'm going to commit. So taking those before pictures and those before measurements can help with motivation along the way. They can definitely help you see how far you've come. So if you look back in six months and you see that you've lost 50 pounds and you see what you once were because of the food that you were eating and you see how you have become more healthy now in the mirror, that is such a huge motivation and the measurements are there. So just in case maybe the scale isn't moving, you might be able to see progress in other ways. They're called NSVs or non-scale victories and they're very important for motivation as well. And again, that commitment, you need to come to that place where you say, I'm ready to change. I'm ready to, you know, get my life on track. I'm ready to finally lose the weight because no change is going to come. Nobody else can make the changes for you. It has to come from within. It has to be your decision. The sixth thing you need to do is purge. You need to purge all of the non keto foods that you have at home. Now, if you live alone, this is going to be super duper simple. I basically lived alone for the first two years of the ketogenic lifestyle and it wasn't an issue just to get rid of those foods and get them out of my life. But if you live with family, you might have to designate your own cabinet. You probably won't use a whole lot of cabinet space. I'm just saying that because you're not going to eat a whole lot of processed boxed foods that just sit in the cabinet. You're probably going to at least need a shelf or two in the fridge because you're going to be eating a whole lot fresher food. So get rid of all of the offenders, the corn, the potatoes, the sweets, and all of those things. And the bread, the bread. <laughs> I definitely recommend having your own cabinet and shelf in the fridge because if you know that, you know, this is all I got to look at, this is all I need in my life, then it makes it definitely a lot easier to stay on track. The seventh thing you want to do is you want to go shopping. I will tell you, you can pretty much eat any meat you want, pretty much any non-starchy vegetable. Artificial sweeteners are pretty much okay. I started out on Splenda, then I moved over to Stevia, um, but now I've been off artificial sweeteners, so I'm trying to just cut those out as well. Coming over some food addictions, and it's taken me five years, you know, so it's it's a process. But I will actually link a video by Dr. Eric Westman who has changed my life. Oh my gosh, this guy has so much free information. I will link a video down below about him talking to diabetic patients about the types of foods that they can eat. And also I will link a food guide that I actually took with me to the grocery store for the first few months of my ketogenic lifestyle change. It's so useful. It lists basically everything that you can eat, things to avoid. And it's just, it's my keto Bible I, and I love it. Now in this shopping mode, the two things that you need to make sure that you have are a food scale. I recommend measuring all of your food in grams because they're just very precise. You also need to download a food log app so that you do not have to do manual calculations. When you log your food in a food log app, you need to make sure that you're logging accurately. And those food logs will tell you all of the carbohydrates, fat, and the protein and calories that you've eaten for the day. If you want to include micronutrients or electrolytes or things like that, you can do that as well. I like Lose It. They are not a sponsor, but I have been using Lose It for five years and I use it every day and I love it. Now in this food log app, you're going to be able to log your weight. I recommend logging every five pounds of weight loss because then you're not going up and down every day. Once you make that five pound weight loss, it's pretty much done, right? You've, you've lost that weight, so plug it into your weight loss app. Then a very important factor in maintaining consistency in weight loss and not plateauing is to recalculate your calorie needs, your macro needs after every 10 pounds of weight loss. I did that and I barely ever had a plateau. 
and all of my 170 pounds of weight loss. If you want to know more about plateauing, I will link this video down below as well. It's very informative and you should definitely check it out. Now, the eighth thing that you need to do is to keep calm and keto on. That is such a big phrase. It was such a big phrase when I started out on my ketogenic lifestyle. And to me, that means that you just need to be consistent. So if you just keep going every day, you are going to see weight loss. If you know that you are eating at a calorie deficit because you are logging that food on a food scale and you're making sure that all of your measurements are very, very precise, you are going to see weight loss. Now, the ninth thing that you need to do is you need to adapt the ketogenic lifestyle to your needs. Once you figure out what is working and what's not working, it's okay to adapt. That is totally fine. I started out on all the fun keto foods like the pork rind nachos and like big, you know, greasy breakfasts. And now, you know, I've adapted so many times and in such a different way that now I'm intermittent fasting. I have one meal a day and I focus on trying to get volume through vegetables. And I just like to have leaner meats in my life because I like to add flavor and things like cheeses and dressings. So it's just going to change based on how your life changes too. All these keto gurus out there change what they say in all of their videos. I do too. If you've seen my older videos, I approach this lifestyle totally differently. Um, even just in maintenance mode, I was eating three meals a day and now I eat one. So it's all going to change and that's okay. Adapt. Adaptability is key. Maybe there are three keys because we'll talk about the last one <laughs> too. Number 10, you need to know that it is okay to stumble and that the main key, the third key to ketogenic weight loss is consistency. <laughs> consistency over the long term. So maybe, yeah, if you let loose a little bit over the holidays or for your birthday or you just had like a bad week at work and you went out and you bought four pints of Halo Top like I did, it's okay. Get back on the wagon the next day. Please do not punish yourself by starving yourself the next day. Um, that does no good. That just kind of sets you up for wanting to binge the next night kind of thing. Again, that can be different for other people, but that's been my experience. When I stumble and then I try and overcorrect by restricting so much the next day, it's just, it makes it harder to come back. So if you do stumble, just go back to your ketogenic lifestyle, the way that it was working before you stumbled. But I will say that it is important to figure out why you stumble, and I talk about that a lot in my binging video. So please make sure to check that out if you do stumble or you fear stumbling in your weight loss journey. You really have to know why you stumble and why we binge and all of the factors that could go into a binge. But remember that third key of ketogenic weight loss is having consistency. So if you are good 95% of the time, you are going to see such awesome, amazing weight loss. Number 11, ignore the criticism. If something is working for you and people don't agree with your approach, well, just ignore it because I tell people all the time that for weight loss, you do not have to meet a fat goal, that the ketogenic lifestyle does not need to be a high fat low carb diet. It should be more of a higher protein, low carb diet. Um, and they just, they don't listen. So, you know, do your best. Ignore the haters. I hate that phrase. Ignore the haters. My 12th ketogenic lifestyle weight loss rule is to plan out your holiday and special occasion eating. When it comes to the holidays, of course, food is a big part of our culture and, you know, getting together with friends and family. And it's important to have those lines that you plan for before the holidays come so that you know what your own basic rules are. For example, this past year, I told myself I would allow one meal at Thanksgiving and I would allow one big plate of food and then I could go back to my ketogenic lifestyle. For Christmas, we planned a very large Chinese food Christmas. We bought eight dishes, two of which I could not eat because those were for the muscle. We got General Tsao and a big thing of fried rice whatever. But we split six of those dishes between us. And I told myself, I'm going to give myself one full day to just eat as much as I wanted of those keto friendly Chinese dishes. And I did. And then the next day I had only gained a few pounds of water weight. And then I was back on track because I had those lines before the holidays ever came. So I didn't just keep you know, eating and eating and I never got back on the wagon kind of thing. So make sure that you know what you're planning to do for those special occasions. And then my 13th tip or rule for the ketogenic lifestyle weight loss program is just always be able to adapt. 
you know, lifestyles change, needs change, budgets change. And so just, you know, seek out that information, keep researching. Um, but you'll find that you're more confident, definitely. After the first couple months, you'll know what you can eat and what you cannot eat. And you'll know how to adapt it better to, you know, your weight loss situation or just what's going on in life. Well, folks, that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did enjoy the video, please make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel. Most of my views do not come from subscribers, but if you are interested in the ketogenic lifestyle and you want to make sure to hear more tips and tricks and recipes and shopping hauls, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. That would help me out so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy New Year. Again, if you are looking for ketogenic weight loss, it has helped so many people. I mean, just Google, you know, keto weight loss and you will find so many before and afters. You can go to my Instagram and check out my before and afters. Or again, another great resource is that subreddit for keto, which I will link down below as well. Well, folks, thanks again. My name's Ellie. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time. Bye and happy new year. Yeah.